morning, folks. I'm on the river with Ted today. We're gonna go catch him. I, we're actually gonna go back to some places that I've scouted a couple weeks back All right. and started to see concentrations of fish. And uh, it's cooling off. We actually got some rain. Yeah. Which is good. Water's a little stained. It's I like nice. the stain. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go catch him up. Yeah. So before I put my, my dry suit all the way on, I do want to point out I got this Action Heat puffy jacket. It's got the, uh, of course now I buried it, but uh, it's got the battery here. And uh, you click on this, you get to kind of hold it for a second. Then it turns red. That's the high setting. Then white. And then blue. Blue is a very low setting. Um, you know, I've used the socks for two trips now on the low setting, and I get more than eight hours uh, with the bigger battery pack. Um, actually, I think I went uh, 10 hours the other day, and when I got home, they were still, there was still some juice left in them. Not the ones that come with the socks, but the, the bigger, I ordered the bigger. Um, power pack for each socks but I don't know this is I'm using the biggest battery pack on this heated uh, jacket lithium battery powered heating so we'll see how it works today so a little bit of stain calls for that Aurora green perch color um, just has contrast with it I like the gold uh, but the mostly it's the black there's black lines on it help it really contrast and stand out. It's some of the, the power of scouting, you know, and, and finding good winter water that, uh, you know, where fish like this are, are going to be. Um, this is not the same one I caught back in, um, you know, three weeks ago. This is a 20-incher. This is a different one, but he was in the same spot on that same log. And uh, yeah, 20 inches first, first catch of the day. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm happy with that. Let's get a weight. And uh, I know there's some other good ones in this in this pool. Uh, yeah, that that fish is about. Where are you gonna settle? About four pound four ounces at 20 inches. So. Pretty happy with that. Cool. Healthy. Healthy looking fish. Might have a couple parasites on his tail. I'm going to pick these off and get them back in. So in a big eddy like this, there's going to be sections where you have hard bottom and a big section with leaves. Uh, it's important that you're, you're moving the bait just enough that you can scratch the bottom and tell Hey, is this a soft bottom or a hard bottom? Um, much beyond that, I don't, I don't want to move the bait much. I mean, you you get it to a spot, let it get to the bottom, and um, yeah, it's on bottom, and then just scratch the bottom a little bit. I think it's a hard bottom, but it's it's not real dynamic. I like feeling some uh, some bigger chunk rocks. I'm going to keep it moving until I feel the right the right kind of rock. There it is. Then you can just let it sit. Take this hand, put it on your knee, watch your line, keep that uh, line taut. I put my index finger on there to feel the bite and uh, wait for that thump. 
I get on this side of me. I had cast it that early with the jackhammer. That's where I said I got bit. Well, on the jackhammer, he just slashed at it, like. But as soon as I put it at the base of that that tree trunk there, I didn't feel a bite. But I'm like, yeah, it feels like either a it's leaf, heavy. a leaf or a fish. Yeah. And I set the hook, and it just it just went. Make sure you get it out, and we'll zoom over to the next spot. How's it going? Doing good. How about you? Doing good. I just got a 20 and an eighth incher off of that that stump right there. Good deal. Yeah. So, you got a you got a trash bag going? I got a few things from that island. I I'm just gonna throw up my vehicle here. Okay. How'd you do today? Uh, just so far, just that. That 120 inch we just put in. So, okay. yeah. All right. It's been a good start. Good Thanks. Alright, so first stop was successful for one one big fish. Got nice one big one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna zoom to some of the other the other spots uh, that I've, I've scouted, you know, about three weeks ago and found a really good concentration of them in these these islands. Cool. And uh, this man, this is nice flow. This is um, there's kids staying. I think this is. I think they're going to be chewing when we get to a, a concentration of them. So, but while we cruise, you, you got any any river keeper news to uh, to tell me about? So let's see. You know, Harrisburg. We have you know ongoing issues in Harrisburg, and you know this year we're going to have a lot of things coming due. Um, so, for example, you know, the city of Harrisburg and the folks that live there have never really had the, the, the engagement that they should from the water authority to let them know, hey, uh, you know, there is combined sewer overflow occurring right now. Stay away from the water. Don't get in. You know, so there's never really been the engagement. So we're going to see from the water authority uh, a completely different outlook and plan on how they're going to engage the public and, you know, Keep them informed. What does that look like to 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 someone on the water? Someone who's who's out here fishing or boating? If if you're out during a combined sewer overflow, you see it, you smell it. Um, it's hard to miss. Now, if you're on if you're on the west shore, you're probably not going to see a lot of it unless Maryville. Something's going on in Marysville, but for the most part, um, you know the eastern shore uh, from you know below let's say a half a mile below Front Street Diner where their first pipe is, Yeah. all the way down past the 83 bridge. Right. Um, there's a series of 60 pipes that dump not just into the Susquehanna, but also- in So this is rainwater that hits the street and goes out, or this is something more than that? So it's rainwater that hits the streets, the pavement, roofs, cars, etc. That gets into the stormwater, that gets into the sewer system. Right, and but why does it smell like poop? Because it's a combined sewer system, so okay. uh, you have raw sewage that's being mixed with that fresh water and rainwater, and when that sewer system becomes <clears throat> overwhelmed, and the wastewater treatment plant can't handle any more flow, or if there's just too much flow flowing through those pipes, those 60 pipes, the, their outfalls that allow that excess to just discharge untreated. You know, when people see, smell, or hear something, they have somebody to call. Right. You know, because when I get a report, you know, if, if Jeff Little says, hey, I smell or see this pollution, you call me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, I'm gonna investigate, but what I'm also gonna do is call the state. So I always follow up with, you know, a state uh, complaint. So they also get aware of it. Right. And then they also respond to it and bring one of their inspectors out too. So that way you have multiple eyes looking at a situation. You have the river keeper and then hopefully you have the state responding to it too. All right, so does that bank look familiar? Maybe, maybe not. A um, lot of fish here three weeks ago. Um, <clears throat> in a little bit higher water than what we have now for sure uh, there's rivers coming up but it's it's not the same level so uh, I've kind of set up Ted to work you know all the way up this bank throwing the uh, the jig or whatever else he's got I think he's actually throwing some uh, Z-Man uh, 
TRD bugs, which is a really good bait. So I gotta tell you, it's weird to me that that bank was so good. I, th I think Ted said he just got one bite, um, but like smashed him three weeks there, three weeks ago. And today, I don't want to say nothing, but he did get a bump. It sh there should have been more. So when that happens and you know you had such a good concentration, they haven't totally moved on. I think they've, they could have changed, you know, position in the greater area and I think it's important to look at other possible like current breaks. I've worked this one haven't got any bites. We're going to move further up. Keep trying you know. They, they didn't just disappear totally move on we just got to find them I think it's time to make a run we were ready to run over the other side we're going to zoom through here I don't get it. That's not how this is supposed to work. That refutes so much of the other video I did about that being an important spot. I don't know. Um, I, I, I'm still gonna go back and work it a different day just to try and confirm. It could be that that bank was just a really good place for them to eat craws that were burrowing into the bank and um, that feeding opportunity dried up I don't know but that concentration of fish that was there three weeks ago was not their day or if they were they were in a slightly different area that we just didn't didn't try so I don't know <laughs> I can't get it right all the time I get it wrong a lot and when I do get it wrong I'm usually ripe for learning something new but we're moving on to another spot Bites. We're getting big ones on wood. Hmm. Oh, look at that launch. Hmm. Yep, right in the lip. Black jig with the bat wings. Yep. That in a little bit muddy water is good for this chunker. Alright, near the end of an island. Slack water. Pretty sizable chunk of wood there. And I worked the back side of it and it wasn't until I came to the front side and just pulled it off of it. Then, uh, let's see how big this guy is. Nice size fish. I don't think you're as big as the first one. Maybe you are. Now you're... Yeah, that fish is 19 and a half. So 20 and a 19 and a half for my, my two fish in several hours. Man. Black jig on the wood. All right, let's let this guy go back. All right, so into the island. Big old eddy caused by that. Ted's working the other side. All of this is really still, and that's a big piece of wood, and both of those fish came off on it. The eddy pinches off towards the end, but this is right in the center. Let me get a jig back in there again. 
its head's working it now. He got he got one bite, bring the brought it about five feet in, and he got off. But there's for sure some good fish on it. is the first two but the, the bites are just tough to come by I don't know <laughs> Ted's agonizing because he's like I gotta get moving he had to leave midday so and we're actually a little bit past that he said he got one to the bow of the boat I'll take a quick measure on this one um, so it was probably 16 or so. That's probably what I got here. Man, maybe not quite. But yeah, he's gonna bug out here a little bit. No, it is 16. Yeah, we're on the back end. Choker. I appreciate you coming out with me, man. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you, don't feel bad. It's, uh, it's... It, I got four bites, uh, and I've caught them, and they've been quality fish, but like, it hasn't been many opportunities, so yeah. you did poke one there, and uh, this is what it, it what happens in winter, is it just time, gets man. tough, yeah. it gets tougher to, you know, fewer fewer opportunities to, to catch them, but I hope you come out with me again. No, man. no, I, I love wintertime fishing, less, less crowds, yep. you know, more solitude. Yep. And you can get into good fish. And yeah. When you, when you do get into them, they're you know, usually decent. Yeah. Yeah. I got three real decent ones today. So I'm going to stay out here. Yeah. And uh, you better get to your afternoon appointment. Yeah. Unfortunately. So, good fishing with you, bud. Thanks, man. It's been a good time. We'll do it again. Yep. So all four of my fish have bit on wood. I mean, where I can, I can pull it along and feel that, you know, it's dragging, then it, you can feel it kind of slide up the, the branch, and then when it gets to the top, it like breaks free. At that point, it's just fluttering down. And that's the best thing you can do, is to keep it tight to wood by not letting it just pendulum swing towards you you want to drop drop your rod tip so that it just goes straight down right next to it tight to the wood uh, I got another piece I can't really tell which way it's running I can see the tip of a branch here and the reverse current on this uh, this eddy I moved to the other side is uh, you know the, 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 the current seems out here then it comes around and comes back up and where it's moving back upstream is where this piece of wood is but all I'm doing is is I'm reeling slowly to kind of feel the bottom I do feel a hard bottom uh, but I want to get it to where I feel that that piece of wood bring it to the top of it and let it jump off and then flutter straight down it's always when I'm editing things like I'm editing this video right now, it, it occurs to me, yeah, I need an illustration. Here goes. Alright, did uh, two illustrations of the same thing. Um, basically, what I'm going to tell you that the better wood is what I refer to as perma wood. This solid, big stuff that is not going to get washed out by a um, 
by flood. Um, there was some of this stuff, this brushy type stuff, smaller pieces that, that have been there, arrived there recently, but is going to get blown out with the next flood. It's, it, they, they tend to be on this really, well, it's permawood. It's, it's big stuff, right? And they tuck up underneath it and, um, you know, to, to deliver a bait to, when they are tight to wood, um, it's all about basically putting a, a cast out there and in feeling, you know, when, when you start dragging it, um, dragging it in, feel, is it this real brushy stuff? No, that isn't it. What you want to do, and sometimes you can see the logs, sometimes, you know, like up here you can see it trailing into the, into the water, uh, but sometimes out here you can't, and you end up like, you know, fan casting all over to feel essentially, you know, you're, you're casting the, the jig to the other side of it and you're going to feel it slide up here and it gets to the top and when it gets to that edge, what you don't want to do is to keep your rod tip in the same position. Uh, you know, what that will do is that it will, it will swing out here away from where that fish is. Um, what you want to do is feel it come up and then with your your rod tip up you're actually gonna once it you know once it clears a spot like this and then drops you want it to drop down you're gonna actually drop your rod tip down to this level uh, and it's it's gonna you know it's gonna let that bait fall straight down and this is where you want it right next to that fish. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you can practice it on a log that you can see in clear water, uh, it's going to help you conceptualize this quite a bit. But it's it's putting it out there, you know, moving it, moving it until you feel, yeah, that's on a log, and then you feel it, you know, out here in free space and, and realize, ooh, it's it's starting to fall. Don't go here drop your rod tip and send it here. The first one actually I, I caught by uh, casting right to the base of the trunk and it was it was fluttering down and on the way down is when it jammed it. So that slow fall and, and I think the hair, you know, the hair part is another piece of I think I've caught, yeah, I've caught a piece of, I've caught a branch. Um, the hair on this creates more surface area and I think it, it it's not you know it is sparse but it it has it you know falling slower than one would think and then uh, because I have the bristle guards you can see the you know those have kind of split them left and right these are pretty stiff I think these are FG9s that are, that are stiff. I like these. I wish I could find them in green or brown. I'm going to put my time in in these two eddies. I mean, I've caught some good ones there. I think I can catch some good ones here, but I have to tickle wood. I have to just get it right up next to the, the trunk or something. You got to find it first. It's easy when it's a steep bank in a, in a you know, tree trunk. It's harder when it's kind of out in the middle, which is where all those were. But having the right finesse jig makes a big difference. If if you're not going to make your own jigs, which that's most people, uh, the Z-Man micro finesse jigs are are good. I would pick the lightest option they have for this this style of fishing. They got the two wire weed guards that can split out, and they're they're good. Get some bat wings on that thing. Favorite colors are blue, black. Green pumpkin and clear. I really like the box and craw. All right, I've worked a bunch of other eddies in this area. I'm gonna go back and hit that original, you know, that wood that I did get them on briefly, and then uh, I don't know. I think it's time to move on and investigate some other areas. I gotta think some mid-river uh, grass islands that are getting ready to flood. We've seen a lot of. Debris come wash down here, and it's 
definitely a rising river. It may be time to check out some stuff uh, out in the middle. Before we do that, it's gonna reload. I mean, it's it's been 40 minutes since I've touched this. It reloaded. <laughs> I've thoroughly probed this wood with the jig a bunch of different directions and I have a real good idea without seeing it in clear water what, what the structure is and a lot of this is, is basically a lot of what I did today is defining the spot within the spot and I can tell you some of it's up here I didn't really mess around with that much most of my fish came off of this there's more of it that comes all the way out to the current seam there and um, you know when you find a winter a wintering area it's important as it gets into early winter to really uh, spend some time on it and figure out where your eat spots are, where your hey I'm just chilling out spots, and I think that's what this is. They just they're comfortable getting near that log. Uh, there hasn't been much in the way of eat, you know, aggressive eating, which there should be because it's it's rising today. Uh, I just haven't happened had it happen that way. Um, it'd be nice if I figured out another another spot but overall what you're doing is finding um, as many of the spots within the spot and the spot is is just this area is you know somewhere that they will winter um, I think in a warming trend uh, which we have things cooling off rapidly it was a very cold hard rain uh, that is, is causing this rise um, if I came back out here in a week if it was bright and sunny in uh, they were a little more active. I think more of these fish would show themselves. It's just been a tough, tough bite today. And uh, I found two spots in two different winter holes that are the spots within the spots. Uh, and, and that's super valuable. Uh, I hope to find a, a, at least one more before I'm done. Uh, I still got a few hours before uh, the end of the day, before I have to uh, get home. But finding two spot within the spots is is for sure valuable all right i'm sitting on this eddy the water is cold it's, it's a little muddy the best thing you can do is to get yourself still that's why i have two anchors bow and stir getting stopped in in with ted he doesn't have an anchor yet um we're working on that. He's, he's ordering the Anchor Wizard and that Scotty Anchor Boom, and, and he'll be set up soon. But you can just get on the bank and kick your heel up onto something on the shore and get stopped. Uh, I'm double anchored out here. I'd like to, with you, take a look at it really from a from a static position from still. Let's look at the foam swirls and look at where the few leaves that are out here are stopping and really assess where's the most comfortable place for these fish to be in terms of not being in much current. Um, yeah, let's, let's take a look. All right, so this is going to work as long as this, this wind that's just picked up as soon as I decided to do that settles down a little bit. But the obvious features, we look up at the top. Look at what this, this log jam is creating a current seam. And obviously that's turbulent. You got foam that's kind of swirling around. Foam moving in different directions than the foam right next to it. Clearly turbulent. And overall, that seam comes out along here. What we're really focused on is looking at the meat of the eddy. And Let's look at, there, there is current running along this way. How do we know? We are stopped and you can look at 
there's a leaf. The leaf is moving to the left. This 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 leaf right there. So it's it's going in the current and moving to the left. Uh, the leaves here in front of me, I'm I'm still in. Uh, they're they're just sitting there. So this is the donut hole. If, if the cyclical current is one big swirling whatever, right in the center, the donut hole, is, is a good place to be. And where you have a donut hole, uh, a little piece of wood in there, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's, that's what we had on the other side. Um, but it, it is important to get still and not pick up the rod right away and just study motion of the, the foam. We actually have some moving to the right. Is that wind driven? I think it's wind driven. Um, you will sometimes have one circular thing at the top and then here at the bottom or, or in the middle you'll have it coming up like this or, or it's actually going to be going the other way. Coming out here and then returning to the center. So there'll be a split. So there'll be one donut hole up at the top and one in the middle. Uh, and, and maybe one towards the end, I don't know. But look at those, those current features. Look at, you know, just study the, the motion of the foam. Because uh, that's going to have a big... Uh, it's just going it, to... It's going to be very important in your pattern development of fishing these, these bigger eddies. And... Uh, in you know saying hey are they are they in the donut hole are they closer to the current seam are they pushed right up towards the top there are they really actually along the bank wherever you find um some wood and there's no wood there unfortunately there's a little bit um but study the foam watch the foam stare at the foam and you got time to do that once you throw a jig out and just scratch the bottom. Know that you have a hard bottom, not a leafy, soft, mucky bottom. Stare at the foam and, and get a visual picture of what, what's going on. Where's the stillest part of it? If you can find the stillest part of it in cold water and you put a jig out there and scratch the bottom, it's got a hard bottom, yeah, you're in business. Here we go again. I feel like I do this illustration every December. Um, <clears throat> not everyone goes back and watches the December playlist. It'd be smart of you to do that. Um, there's a whole lot of, of good content, especially in the last two years in, in, uh, in December. But let's, uh, let's do an illustration on that, Eddie. Let's take a look at this. Um, the first thing I'm, I'm going to mention is that I got my boat still. I got an anchor off the bow and the stern. And really what that allows me to, to do is to, to be still so I can look at the little leaf next to me and know that I'm in the still part. Or I can look at something up in the donut hole above me. Or look at you know, the leaf that's that's traveling along this bank and going this way and identify different different features. Um, double anchoring or kicking your heel up onto the you know the shoreline or or even wedging on the, the log jam itself in, in casting downstream. Lots of different boat positioning options here. First step, get yourself completely stopped. Um, once you're doing that, you know, once you are stopped, you can really start to watch foam and watch leaves on the surface or whatever it is uh, in, in assess how fast each of these, you know, these current features, you know, you just stare at foam and you, and you figure it out. But generally, if, uh, 
you know, you have this turbulent area out here, tur turbulent current seam. If they're really active, they're going to be um, out here eating on this current seam. Uh, usually in warmer weather, they're out here if they're actively feeding. And the most active spot is this eat spot right here. I'm about to catch a fish in a place like that. Uh, they turn on here in just a little bit in and you know catching a fish in that right up at the top uh, and, and honestly if you if you're fishing these areas and you're not catching fish you got to look at more active or more inactive chill spots like the center of the donut hole especially if there's a piece of wood jutting right out into the middle of the stillest uh, stillest current um, the split is just something that that separates two you know big cyclical currents with with the donut hole um, you know where they come together sometimes you find them you know in a little little uh, area on the bank where currents going this way and currents going this way but there's a calm spot there same thing back here and the you know where the eddy tapers out I didn't really mark that but the very end of the eddy um, can be good um, but yeah, get yourself stopped, watch foam, look at it all, take it all in. <clears throat> and when you get bit in eat spots like this, go find other eat spots like this. If you get bit on donut holes, go find other donut holes. Get yourself stopped so you can actually see it. If you're floating around, if the wind is pushing you forward, even if you're anchored off the front and you're swinging side to side, A, you're not going to feel that bite because it's going to throw slack in your line, but B, you're not doing as good a job looking at that little speck next to your boat or the one out away from it a little bit uh, that is drifting and, and you just can't gauge what these features are if you are swinging and drifting. All right, let's get back to this, this trip. It's about to turn on. They're about to get real active. Caught some in here three weeks ago. It's a good bit more current though. Okay, you know what this jig and bat wings combination looks like. We've looked at it before. I just got a bite and this is why it makes sense to downsize in winter. What's missing? Yeah, he had the claws. He just barely missed that, but man, at least I know there's some fish there. I'll put a new trailer on there, but if that happens again, I'm really gonna need to think about downsizing. Um, you know, that bat wings, it's already pretty small, but I don't know, I may have to go smaller yet. Maybe the TRD gobies. Got that one bite, and then nothing, and then uh, we got this guy. It's a big one. Yep, you know, not many bites. Good ones when they come. You know, are you, is this the one that that bit the claws off? Probably not. Um, I actually checked the depth. It isn't a really, really deep uh, eddy, but what it has going for it is it is connected at the back of this island to the other one, so they can kind of go back and forth. See how big this guy is. You know, the, the concept of connected water is for sure important in in summertime, but in winter it also plays a role. Um, you know, how far can they go without without really working? Yeah, he's 17 and three quarters. Um, this fish can easily go to that wood on the other side uh, without fighting a whole lot of current and you know when you have multiple 
I'm gonna say multiple eat spots or multiple, and that was the first eat spot fish for sure. I gotta retie. Look at that. Um, he was he was up in this corner. I'm gonna show this to you real quick, and you could see that you know <laughs> that the river's rising because you know. So here's a big log jam, and here's some chunks of it floating off. He was right about where that's drifting into but he was pressed all the way up there and that's an aggressive spot you know the equivalent of where I've been catching him is back you know in this slack water eddy um, but man the river's rising that's the first one I've seen in an aggressive sort of place he was looking to eat nosed right up to that current seam but still in the slack water all right let's retie this thing So that fish did eat on a pause, I'm going to tell you longer than 45 seconds. I don't know that it was a minute, um, but it was just sitting there, had been sitting there in uh, who knows how long he stared at it before he said, yeah, I got to find out. Oh, <clears throat> but it's good to see one in a aggressive location. So I will try more current seam presentations because of that. Could be that they're, you know, they, they pick their moment to get active and that may be happening right now. Current seam. Oh, what happened? Oh my gosh, what happened? Why? My drag's good? Why? Why did you not want your picture taken? That was the next cast in there. Doesn't that happen already today? Next cast in. Is this sharp? Yeah, it's sharp. Currency, go. I kind of think I'm sitting right in the donut hole. Got current swirling there. Current seam over here. Foam right next to the boat is just sitting there. Grabs a leaf. Alright, there's at least. Another one, this is actually the smallest of the day. I'm sorry, I don't mean to hurt your feelings. You're still a nice fish. Not a leaf. What I was gonna say I was gonna do when that happened next time. Downsize. I don't know though. What do I do? Uh, but they're eating the Oh. What do I do? All right, let's let's put a um, TRD gobies and yoga pants on this, and then they can't just nip at the claws. So how's that gonna look on the on the finesse jig? You gotta eat the whole thing, guys. do that for me just eat the whole thing eat the whole thing let's get some scent on there they're nipping it's totally a winter thing to do this is why I got these okay On 
the Tierney Gobies. Let's see how deep he took it. Not that deep. Alright, I'm on top of active fish, and this is good because I have um, kind of confirmed a little bit later into the into the season that yeah there is a concentration of fish here um i want to go back to the second place we went i think it just may be like certain times a day they just fire up um and eat and these fish are in an aggressive spot and like this is hard like what i'm doing right now is is counterintuitive and difficult but i gotta know that second spot it, did we just hit it at the wrong time? I don't know, but I gotta find out. We gotta leave fish to find fish. Bad idea, but I'm doing it because I want to know. Did, did we just hit it wrong? Or are those fish actually not there? Uh, I'm gonna find out. I'm gonna chill on a granola bar and go find out. God, it's hard leaving that. Oh. It's, it's intel gathering. It's worth doing. That's a good spot. Did you buy one yet? We need to. Really just restores you on cold days. Oh, it's getting hot. Oh, wow. This, this is not where I intended to... This, I don't know why I stopped here. This is weird. I did not... This was not my intended target, but they're active. Like, this is, I guess, their active moment. And I just pulled up on a random spot. I'm like, that wood looks nice. Hmm. They're just waking up. That, I just... I was not expecting... I don't know why I threw there. I threw there for a reason. I threw there because there was an 18 incher in there and some part of me subliminally understood that I needed to throw there. So, oh man, that's cool. Let's see if he has friends. You know, I left fish to find fish and I went to find fish in, in a spot that I'm like, yep, I'll go back there where I failed earlier today to, I don't know. I was just like, nah, that place looks good. Sometimes you gotta listen to that little voice in, in your head that says, hey, there's a fish there. Try to listen to it to say, here if it says there's another fish there I, and I'm not hearing it huh you like the TRD gobies gobies gobes the funny thing is I am like right around the corner from that spot where I smashed them three weeks ago did they just move to this side of the island? I don't know. I don't know. But that fish whacked it. There was no mistaking that that hit. <laughs> Here's another. GoPro start recording. Yeah, 
can't believe you're running upstream. Oh, man. I'm trying to get you to get on the right side where my GoPro is pointed. Could you do that for me? Could you please? Another nice bigs are on this side. Hmm. 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 Mm. Yep. He's hooked on the outside. Interesting. Okay. I'm gonna have to file this spot away. I just I didn't expect it. Eighteen. And you're gonna go in a half? Yep. No. Quarter. Now you're closed mouth. Swing tail. Eighteen and a half. Mm. See ya. Go back in. Two of them over eighteen in that same spot. I'm, I, now I'm glad. Now I'm I'm happy I left fish to find fish. Yeah, I'm just on the other side of the island from where we smashed them. They moved. They move around. Connected water. They could go to either side of the island. But I think you know it is a wintering thing where they can They cluster around the ends of islands. All right, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately for the video, uh, I've snagged. So we're gonna go in and look at this wood-caused shoreline eddy where those two nice fish came from. So there is depth, and this is all really still. And you can see there's a bunch of Big pieces of wood. How to get out of there? That uh, these fish, fish raw. All right, we're gonna swing back to this. We're gonna let it settle down. Maybe it'll reload. Who knows? Let's jump up. There's another one right up here. All right, I just broke off uh, the that jig. I'm switching to the, the green uh, because it's just cleaner, cleaner water. Um, it, it was stained on that side, and this is fairly clean water on this, out here in the middle, on this island. So, and they're here. A lot of good water here. I, I don't know if I just missed this last time and neglected to fish this side of the island. I don't know. Time to get out of here. Uh, I, I may actually hit one or two more spots on the way back that, that looked good. Um, but that bank didn't do it. And uh, found some other ones that did. Uh, for sure got the spot within the spot on, on one over there, one on this side, and uh, found a new place. I say a new place, but I think it's related to this. I think it's just on the other side of the island where they can swing, you know, from one side to the other, um, you know, with different river levels. I, I think it's a little bit 
higher and it's on the way up compared to when I was here last time. So I don't know how that changes things, but um, you know, it's a good day. Good, good progress for uh, finding the spot within the spot and, and appropriately downsizing from the, the craw to the, the uh, TRD gobies. It's, uh, it's time for that, time for small stuff. Thanks for watching. See you.